103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, June 13th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, your daughter five. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. No, you see what you're doing? You're using the driver as a putter. You got to use the putter for putters and the drivers for drivers. There's the right tool for every throw. That's true. I've never used a driver for a putter, though. But <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Okay. Uh, with us today, we have uh, Doubtfire, uh, George Brooklyn, George two and a half, and um, oh, John Richards, the John Richards. The I was John looking Richards. on my page for your name and I didn't have it uh, set up right. Anyway, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, what do you have for us today? Hey, if Dredd was here, we'd normally start with our invocation, but since he is currently away, or temporarily away, uh, what I would like to start with is my favorite quick, 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 super fast, won't take any time at all, we'll be done before you even think about it. Too late. Uh, summary. Oh, it's already <laughs> over. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, hash on how everyone's been doing since last week. We'll start with our own John Richards, who looks like he's in front of the Tower of London. <laughs> yeah, <one laughs> or, of what's, what's the castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the castle behind you, and how you been since last That's time we spoke? one of the gatehouses of Arundel Castle. Which wow, very cool. No. Very cool. So, how you been? The, the bit in the back is the, the castle itself, the tall bit. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I've been fine. Thank you very much. Cool. No uh, serious inconveniences to report. No serious inconveniences, though I heard there's a story about cooking going on right now. What, what's going on with <laughs> well, that? Yeah, well, very often I'm, I'm required, it's my turn to cook on a Sunday. Ah. But um, th there's one thing that did happen since we last met, which is I had a birthday. I'm oh. not telling you how old I am, so forget that. Don't ask that <laughs> question. Happy but, birthday. Uh, Happy birthday. The, Thank you. It was Friday. So since I had a birthday, they cooked for me and I had, you know, cake and candles to blow out and stuff. And that meant that instead of having a normal Friday takeout, we had takeout last night <laughs> and we ordered too much. So we're eating it again tonight. I don't have to cook. I'm Very here. fantastic. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of enjoy the process of cooking too. So if you want to cook for your birthday, I think you're old enough to go for it. You can, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Well, happy birthday. That's great to hear from you. Thank uh, you. Scott, how you hey. been, buddy? What's going on in the music scene? Music scene is exciting right now. Today, I'm going to go perform on a oh, yacht. Nice. Yeah, out in, and out in the uh, place called Crab Island in the Gulf of Mexico. Whoa. So it's wow. going to be fun. Okay, so uh, you've been giving me some synthesizer advice on, mm -hmm. on I've been looking at uh, a micro Korg. If you guys don't know, it looks a keyboard, but it's got like basically a calculator on the top, just a bunch of buttons and knobs and, and, and dials and stuff. And I got to be honest with you, when I first heard like electric music, electronic music, it all kind of sounded the same to me. I didn't know what I was listening for. And now I realize that it's not so much like the, the bass music in, in a sense it's more of like the tones that are being chosen the sounds that are being crafted and like that's the that's the craft behind it and now i'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting appreciated a lot more so yeah thanks mm -hmm. for opening up my eyes to that what's what's your second to be like oh i'm gonna play a few of my own tunes it's gonna be kind of like um it's gonna be an edm it's supposed to be an electronic dance music mm. party so it'll be like um DJing, so I've got a little DJ set up, and then also all my equipment, like my drum machines and synths and stuff nice. like that. I'll be playing live. And, and is it a one-man show? Like, are you just like a one-man show? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. You got to live stream that, or at least have some sort of video record documentation of that. Help us get out. Of I know that'd be great. I'm trying to get my sister to come. She's got a better phone than I do. My phone is really junky. I need to get a new phone since if I'm going to start doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, cool. Is your uh, kids getting into it? 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get them to come on the next one if I can. We're supposed to be doing them like every other weekend, and they want nice. me to, to be there to do it. So my kids want to come along, and they can't do it today, but they want to jump in. They'll probably do it maybe next weekend, hopefully. Sure. Yeah, if you start them now, they'd probably be your vocal uh oh yeah gateway moving in at the future i can see that. Be my little dance crew <laughs> yeah yeah that's what you need there you go and i had uh anthony magna bosco on um friday for my uh show so i had there you, you on the week the weekend before last um on the exploring epistemology show and, that's and on then i interviewed you where can we get these shows or what's a place that we can access these uh interviews yeah. that you're doing so go on YouTube hmm. and um, it'll be the Borg Skeptic channel. The Borg in my particular Borg show. Skeptic or <laughs> Borg? Yep. Borg, like B -O -R -G. the Borg in Star Trek. B -O -R -G. Borg. Okay. It will be Got assimilated. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, go to that channel on YouTube and then look for Exploring Epistemology with Scott Williamson. And that's where I'll have um, all my interviews and I'll be doing SC next week with a wow. priest, uh, Elmo. I think we had Elmo on this show one time. Yeah, we've had Elmo in the past before. Friend that's where I met him. So, yeah. Cool. Nice. Nice. Uh, George, happy to Yes. You. you look what? great in that sweater. Uh, you, it's so many different mics in your house. I think we've lost count by now. <laughs> well, how you been? How you they're been? all lousy. They're, they're all terrible. <laughs> to be honest, Let's try I like back that on this. I like that one. Well, uh, yeah, that one's uh, pretty uh, good. As you all know, I've been having an awful time trying to get connected through Zoom. Mm. And um, I'm not sure what I did to achieve success this morning, but there was a change in one of the menus that I was presented with. So I nice. took it and, and you know, it? yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, some of you know, I, I use the Linux operating system and Linux is like a tower of Babel. It's not like Microsoft or, or Macintosh where, you know, um, there there's sort of one unified pipeline for everything. The, the, right. This is a free, Unix is a free for all. Yes. And there's 2,000 versions of it, and yep. you can go down the rabbit hole easily. Yeah. yeah. I've found, and so I'm, all I can say is I I'm still struggling with it, and I achieved some success this morning, and I don't know what I did, and this is so maddening. I'll give you I'll give you some props. Um, go ahead. You're using you're using Linux, maybe even Ubuntu or something like that. I can't get my mom to basically know how to end a phone call. You know, just to like yes, the red yes. lines. Like how do I how do I hang up? This makes no sense. It's a it's a brick, it's a big glowing. Yeah block how do i hang up this phone like, so good on you. you're, you're leagues and above like you're probably in the top percentile of most people who have computers being able to do something. well you see i used to be when i lived in the windows world and uh, you know i i came at this from dos oh you know, shoot yeah that's in 1984 crazy. and i have been Four. very computer literate nice there were um, yeah, in right. the my, in the Microsoft world, but now I'm in Linux. I'm a baby. I don't yeah, know no, what no, the no, hell no, I am no, doing. Yeah. You know, it's always it's very frustrating. Use. Command line is it command line or GUI? No, no, I'm not using the command line. I'm I'm just using the visual interface. I use okay. the command line when I'm in real trouble and need somebody to help. Me. <laughs> the shell, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Larry. You used to be a computer dude way back when, right? Right, programmer. Uh -huh. Nice. Did you ever play around with Linux? Did you have a good time with it? Uh, well, the only time I ever used Linux was uh, when I got into the blue, uh, sorry, Blackberries, the um, Raspberries. Oh, the, little the little computers. Yeah, the little computers are like, what, $100 for a kit, and uh, you can load Linux on it and run all kinds of software. But uh, it was basic, basically for entertainment. Uh, modules, you know, showing movies and listening to music, things like that. So I didn't really have to use uh, cameras or microphones or anything, but it worked really well for that. Not bad, not bad. Did you ever use uh, the Linux kernel called the Holy Book? 
You ever no. do that? <laughs> that says you, there's no command line. You just have to worship it without uh, And <laughs> praise. As you long as you do that, using a, a lot of praise, line. yes. As long as you do that, all your files are safe. But if you don't, it's going to come and get you. It's going to come and get you. And it'll maybe and burn get, all my files. It'll burn all your files forever and ever and ever and ever yeah, and ever. Yeah. It'll suffer for all of eternity. But not if you worship it. And I think that kind of brings us into kind of what I wanted to talk about the show. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, do one quick summary of what i was up to before we jump into it i'm getting into disc golf not so much like becoming like a fanatic about it but i did do my first 18 holes or poles or whatever you want to do talk about uh yeah. yesterday and it was really really fun i can tell you this right now i did not expect to enjoy it i saw a youtube video that was like four hours long being like this golf and i'm like i'm not watching that video I mean, like You're is that like frisbee golf it's like frisbee golf it's exactly okay. that and okay. i'm like i'm not gonna watch this four hour long video next thing you know i'm watched three of them and like my whole weekend's <laughs> over and i'm like how did this happen youtube <laughs> algorithm how am I? And then next, you know, Amazon has your shipments ready. I'm like, what do you mean my shipments ready? There's disc golfs in here. What's going on? So uh, it's been a love affair and uh, I'm having some fun going outside. Uh, good and, exercise. Yeah. And enjoying being outdoors outside. Again, since mm -hmm. COVID. Yeah. It's been wonderful. It's been mm -hmm. wonderful. Guys, got a chance to go outside, do it because, you know, we've been, we've been locked up for a while. But right. I'm not worshiping disc golf. <laughs> so, so I wanted to talk about a quick story from an uh, uh, old book. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but it's called The Bible. It's kind of popular. I heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> you sure? Should I do like a rundown on it? No, I don't think so. No. Okay, okay, okay. So there's a, there's a verse in the Bible where basically uh, Jesus is... Um, uh, you know, starving himself for 40 days and 40 nights or something close to that. <laughs> and Satan comes and visits him. And it's like, hey, Jesus, you don't have to do that. If you worship me, I will give you, you know, a, like basically all the kingdoms in the world and all their glory. I'll give you all those things if you just fall down and worship me. And Jesus says to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Technically talking about himself too, right? Yeah. But then the devil heard that and he's like, okay. And he leaves. And then next thing you know, the angels from God come down and administer to Jesus in his daily moment. But I thought that was a great... And I'm doing a quick disclaimer here. I don't think Satan's real. I don't think uh, the the character in that book, as that's called God, is a real God. And I'm suspicious even of like a lot of things that even Jesus did. I feel like he's an amalgamation of a lot of different things right. put together. But uh, if you make it general, then I don't know what you're talking about. But if you're talking about that specific character in that specific story, no, I don't believe that's a, that's a real thing. But I do think that it is a great example of a spirit, supernatural being taking no for an answer and being cool with it and just disappearing. And to get that from Satan is kind of like an, uh, an ironic sentiment. Cause here you have Satan being like, you don't want to worship me. Okay, cool. See you later. Whereas if you did that with Jehovah or like the main God, he's like, well, now let me punish you for all of eternity. And it's very scary or not scary, but startling recognition on my part that one of them asked to be worshiped with the intent of, if you don't do it, I'm going to punish you. I need you to worship me. And the other one asked to be worshiped. And it was like, but if you don't want to, it's totally cool. <laughs> I got other things to do. I'm not going to pressure you to do this. I was trying to help you out. <laughs> and it brings to me two things. Why do we worship? And two, what does it say about the ability to take no for an answer? So, uh, Larry, I'd like to highlight you first. Do you see value in the concept of worship? And um, as far as taking no for an answer, wouldn't that seem like what a benevolent God would do? No, I, I, I see no real use or uh, value in the concept of worship. I mean, you can honor things like, like I honor truth and scientific truth, uh, uh, <clears throat> truth in uh, politics, truth in uh, interpersonal relationship. But I don't, you know, build al altars to it. I don't fall down on my knees and clasp my hands together and praise it. You know, I don't, I don't see the value in worshiping anything. It's like an over-the-top reaction that's undeserved. Sorry about that. That's a great answer. And then what about the idea of like, hey, if you're a benevolent God, is it okay for you to take no for an answer? If, or should you not even be asking to be worshipped in the first place? That's my 
that's my two cents, but. But I want God would, you know, say, you know, I want what's best for you. And if you feel that uh, worshiping is not good for you uh, as to grow as a person, fine. Mm. But that would be a benevolent God. John, throw that out to you. What yeah. would you What would you anticipate as an answer if uh, a benevolent God uh, had to consider asking its creations to worship it? Would Would it go through the process of asking it? and punishing them if they, if they don't? Or is there something that my limited heathen mind can't compre comprehend at this moment? Well, punishment doesn't sound at all benevolent to me. Mm. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think we have a contradiction right there. Okay, 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 okay. You're a benevolent parent. What, what, happened, what, what happened the last time you asked your kids to worship you? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, roundly ignored, I think. <laughs> but uh, the, <laughs> the, the thing is about this, um, I, I was, I've got an old friend who's very religious, and he, he belonged, he was brought up in some of the, one of the more obscure Christian sects, Plymouth Brethren or something like that. And uh, the other day, I haven't seen him for some years, but I was chatting to him and I said something vaguely disrespectful towards the Christian God and he said to me bend the knee bend oh the did he do it in an English accent because that'd be fantastic I might actually do it at that yes, point a, a, a northern English accent Liverpool <laughs> bend the knee nice nice I love it I love it and I was I was quite astounded really because I hadn't seen him in that mode and uh, so it was quite novel for me but worship, no, it's, my, my feeling is that this comes about because of the context I'm going to use. Sure. What is, what is frequently a theistic trick and talk about, you've got to, res, you've got to consider it in the context. Talk to me in context. Yeah, I'm open yeah. to context. Give me some context. Yeah. Drop some context well, bombs on me. Th this particular religion was invented a few thousand years ago, wasn't mm. it? Sure. And at the time, there were uh, there was less civilization than there Absolutely. is now. Absolutely. And, and and what ruling there there was being done was done by force. You know, there were a few warlords with big swords, and they they were the boss guys, and they insisted that you should be submissive towards them. Right. Or or they really did punish you in, in some, you know, very severe way. It was an so, effective uh, system for sure. Yes. <laughs> so I suspect that since that's when these religions were created, they incorporated that scenario, that, you know, the, the way life was then. Hmm. And, and if, if you're expected to bow down to your warlord, then surely the biggest warlord of all would expect <laughs> you to worship him. That's that's the sort of reasoning I'm coming to. Yeah. Well, help me help me out with the history. Uh, why then do we have terms like <laughs> benevolent God or God that loves you or God that accepts you just the way you are or kumbaya or like you know the loving God? Like where did where did this you know happy go lucky everything's cool but you still got to worship me? That's the fine print. Where did that God come from? Because it doesn't seem like to be the one from Old Testament or like black and white New Testament. Do you know about anything about that? I think it's a marketing ploy. It's the carrot huh? and the stick, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when you realize that the stick doesn't work for everybody, let's throw in a few carrots. You know, this is <laughs> <laughs> a loving God. This one is loving God. The fact that um, he, he only loves certain people. Yeah, you know? there's <laughs> that too. There's that too. There's that too. His chosen people. Mm. And and he doesn't seem to care about, for example, babies that are born with a genetic defect too much. You know, that you've got to gloss over that. <laughs> sure, right, yeah, uh, that and kids that like to correct other kids' grammar. Like he doesn't seem to do anything to stop that from happening either. Just like <laughs> the jerks of the world, he does nothing to stop the jerks of the world. Seems like um, a god would want to stop that. I I'm also. Scott, love for you to weigh in on this too. The character of Satan is such an interesting character for me because you can look at it at face value of Satan's the bad guy, God's the good guy, right? Like that's what the book tells you. But in every 
literally from chapter one. Like if I didn't know anything about these two characters and I had to pull facts out of a hat, the one that, the fact that I pull out where it's like, character A drowned all of humanity and including all the babies and, and impregnated a woman in Mesopotamia Bronze Age and, and expected her to figure out her own father situation as if that was like a suitable thing to do or, you know, literally feeds people to lions or sacrifice his son in the most tortuous way possible to forgive other people for rules that he himself created. And then you have other character, character A's like, told a guy to eat an apple <laughs> and i'm like oh i don't know uh it's it's like how do you tell which one's the bad guy and which one's the good way like scott what do you like what do you think about that as like a system or as a it's... as a phenomenon of the bible like you have these two characters good guy bad guy mm, but they don't I... seem to match up whatsoever yeah it's it's so many ways you can go with that so you can do what you call an internal critique Okay. of that whole story, which is you're just jumping into the worldview of the Bible. So you're kind of considering what did the Bible writers mean? What did they, you know, what's consistent or inconsistent within the text itself? So you have to figure out what is the text really doing here? Hmm. And so part of understanding what the text is doing is to kind of understand a little bit about the historiography behind it. So I think like in the the writers of the Bible wanted to automatically assume, you know, Yahweh or Jehovah is the good guy. Mm -hmm. So that's right off the bat. That's like a baked in assumption from the beginning. And then, so everything he does is going to be good by definition. And if you think about the historiography about it, um, think about how, what they, what the, what were the values of people back then, they valued people that were powerful, that could kill as many people as possible. Sure. Those were the heroes. Those kings were worshipable. Scott, I'm gonna throw something out at you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that may not have been the prevailing opinion, but maybe just the opinion of people who had the power to, right. to distribute mm -hmm. books. Like I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure women may have had a different opinion, but they simply due to their position and caste didn't have the opportunity yeah. to express what they wanted to see in a God. And so what mm -hmm. we see in God is just powerful people coming up with the most powerful person and like unempathetic people coming up with the most unempathetic supernatural being and misogynists coming up with the most misogynist. Mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. sense. Absolutely. Larry, what do you think? Well, I think you, you landed on it when you said powerful. Uh, the Old Testament really didn't show much of a love, a loving God. Uh, he was the powerful God. He was the yes. creator God. He was the boss of us all God. <laughs> the loving God didn't really come around until the New Testament when Jesus was there to hype for him and say, that, you know, your father in heaven will have a home for you. And you know, he's all about love and all this stuff. But it, it, that wasn't really the, uh, the message of the Old Testament. Truth. Truth. The message of the Old Testament essentially is, you know, it's a pretty nice life you got going on here. Be ashamed if something bad happens to it. Right. No, like I think that's, the, that's the New Testament. That's the New Testament. That's the, no. here's the Jesus story. The right. Old Testament is just, I'm doing bad stuff. Obey, <laughs> o obey or die. Obey Basically. or die. Right. Obey or die. And then it was, it'd be really nice if you obeyed me right now. George, that does this confuse you at all? Lifelong atheist? Like uh, the idea of like people would worship like when you figured out who the God character was in the Bible and you're like, is this who people are worshiping? Did that ever surprise you or? Well, you know, um, uh, to, to new viewers or listeners, I will uh, give you a context. I was brought up without God. Yeah. I, and and no big deal. I mean, my my mother was not a militant atheist. She was mil militant about other things, but but we we simply didn't have God, you know. Yeah. And um, if anything, I was dragged off at the age of four to humanist le uh, lectures, <laughs> not understanding a word of it, at the Brooklyn Society for Ethical Culture in New York, and and. Um, so if if I have any religious context, which is a non-religious context, it's that. And so to me, the whole concept of a devil proves there's no God. 
the whole concept of the devil proves it on God. Please elaborate. I feel like I don't want to connect these dots for you. Okay, very simple. It's very simple. Mm. Um, God is omnipotent, right? Yes. He's the boss of everything. Boss of everything. If he's the boss of everything, he's not going to tolerate the devil at all. Mm. You're going to strike him down with a thunderbolt. That's going to be the end of the whole damn thing. With a lightning bolt. So Yes. You know, of course, if he really is omnipotent, there won't be any devil to begin with, because he won't allow it. Now, Scott, so you might be aware of the apologetic of necessary evil. Have you heard of that before? Mm -hmm. How would you mm -hmm. respond to, to to Georgia's statement? Right. So, if I was to put my Christian hat on Still, and huh? argue about it, I would say that in order to have free will and to show love there has to be some opposite to work from so you know if if we only have the option to do good things and live a pleasurable life and all of that then there's no free will it's like if there's nothing but evil then there's no chance to do good then god's made it impossible to do good you have no free will you're you're stuck into that mode of you're either have no you have only the possibility to do good choose good things uh worship god or you have the option to not worship god and never do good things so either way so you need a balance you need a little evil and a little good in order to work from you need some kind of contrast that's the apologetic there and and so mm -hmm. my response on top of that would be you're the boss of everything there's no there's no justification of well there needs to be a balance it's like no because you have the choice when you're making the universe of saying nah there doesn't need to be this kind of balance it could be this kind of balance where there's no needless suffering where there's nobody getting hurt where there is no evil i i as the boss of everything have the opportunity to make that yet i chose this particular system and so then the next level of apologetic would be like well you just don't know it because you're an invaluable human being and that's very frustrating as an argument but I can't. Hey, George, what's up? Go for it. Well, it, um, I, I had something else to say, too. But I, uh, I mean, the, our topic is why worship? Yeah. And, you know, often I realize that I'm using words and I need to go back to the dictionary and find out what this word really means. Or how and, it's used. Yeah. And so what do we mean by worship? Uh, we can handle that in the second half because we're almost about to get, uh, <laughs> cut into the uh, the break. Though I do want to say, I think just before we, we round out on this topic, I am totally fine with there being good and evil, as as Scott has outlined in the Christian apologetic. Like, there, if there's a necessary evil and a necessary good for that balance to occur, I can, though, by reading the Bible, clearly see that God is not the good one. <laughs> yeah. Right. And if I had to make the assessment of like, which of these two characters are the most evil, there are literal stories where it's the Satan going up and being like, Hey, you called me up to heaven. What's going on? It's like, God's like, Hey, check it out. We're going to, we're going to play a prank on this guy. We're going to destroy his entire family. I'm going to destroy all of his livestock. I'm going to kill all his wives. And he's going to totally not curse me. He's going to be like, Oh yeah. I love you so much. God, check this out. <laughs> The devil's like, oh, my gosh, what's going on here? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you won, God. Good job. It's like, yeah, now I'm just going to give them some new people. Like, there, there's your new family. All right, we're done. Go back to hell. I'm like, that is the, that is such the evil guy. That's the evil one. That's the evil yeah. one. <clears throat> just my book. And yet. Can I tell a story? Well, you we're can at in the, the second break. half. The second, okay, second I'll half do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Larry, Larry, sorry for uh, going long. but uh, That's okay. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, June 13th, 2021. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. 
Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly meetings, both on Zoom and in person. The person meeting takes place at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in the Old City every Tuesday evening after work and goes until about eight o'clock. You'll also find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Also, R-E-T, the Rationalists of East Tennessee, can be found at rationalist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start Start one. one. That's right. Uh, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Actually, we're going to start with George since he wanted to tell a story in the first half of the show. Our topic of the show today is why worship? What do you get out of it? Why you ask for it? What's the value? What's the deal with worship? Anyway, George Brown, what's your story? <laughs> well, see, it, this is my simple worship story. Um, you got to understand that to me, the whole concept of religions is just absurd. And <laughs> Uh, this is how I've lived my life. It's, what, what in the hell are these people doing? Why are they doing it? So, but you see, the way I'm wired, uh, I have a hard time doing arithmetic. I, I have always had difficulty doing math and learning certain things in the classroom. So I was in high school and I was having a hard time with whatever math I was supposed to be doing. It just doesn't work for me. And uh, I was walking down Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, Flatbush and there was Avenue. a okay. Flatbush Avenue. Yeah, it's a real street, and um, going to the subway or something. And and there was a man on the sidewalk with a little table, and he had these little tiny Bibles. And there was a sign that said, "Free Bible to any Jew who will promise to read it." I said, "I'll do that." <laughs> now these were these were shirt pocket. Size Were Bibles. They like just the New Testament? Yeah, they're the Gideon you know, Bibles, basically. I think it was the whole the thing. The whole I think thing. it was the whole thing, Larry. Wow. Rest pocket? Yeah, real thin paper. Real thin paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, desp- <laughs> I'm flunking. I'm flunking math. I'm desperate. <laughs> Are you sure he's selling you Bibles and not astigmatism? Well, so I got this Bible and I, you know, I, I start opening it up. I think I'll pray to the Bible and, and maybe I'll pass math, you know. Mm. And so I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And fucking not. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, uh, I knew it was going to happen sooner. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen sooner. We have to edit excited, this. Guys. He was going yeah, to uh, to uh, to well, to anyway, I, I prayed and nothing happened, you know. And so that's the sum total of my worship. Hmm. I, I'm done. I don't even yeah. know where I put that little Bible, but um, it's the end of my story. John Richards, what do you got? Well, we've been talking about worship, and you mentioned misogyny, I think. Uh, yes. And and it struck me that worship is almost entirely a male thing, isn't it? It's very sexy. Oh, geez. We, you know, we in the grand scheme of things, you only ever asked, a man only ever asked for worship. So... Yeah. Yeah, I f- we don't. Well, there are plenty of Roman gods that are goddesses, you yeah, know, yeah. And, like Diana yeah. and Aphrodite and and Absolutely. Freya. Freya, I think, was Norse, but there are a lot of them in, in the multi god. But like, if you go to, even to that tier of gods, if you go into like Norse gods, it's like King Odin who's like asking and telling all the other gods, "I'm I'm the boss." You were, I'm the end game guy. Like you can ask for good weather from this person, but I get the final say. So like there is that misogyny layer. Sorry, John, but yeah. what, what were you going well, for? Well, since we've gone back to the Roman gods, my favorite is the female god that was responsible for keeping Rome's sewers flowing. <laughs> she was oh. well worth worshiping. I'm trying to think of her name. It'll come to me later. Okay. But okay. The point I wanted to make, it's, Roman Catholicism that sort of breaks this rule of worship being for men because they the Catholics tend to worship the Madonna quite a lot. Ah, uh, now Jesus, mm-hmm. yeah. Jesus is his mum. And there's an interesting story about a okay. Madonna statue, which you may or may not have heard, which suddenly started to weep tears from its eyes. Yeah. 
and and this became a tourist attraction. Lots of people came along to worship the weeping Madonna, and you know, stalls were set up to sell them food and drink, and so on. It became a very profitable enterprise. And then one day, somebody was called in to do a plumbing job in the church behind the statue, and it was discovered that the toilet was leaking and the tears were coming from there. <laughs> Well, That's funny. well, you know, uh, my my that, one of my uh, that elders the told me the real reason the the statue was weeping was because she was sad that people were worshiping her and not God. Uh -huh. Is that the story? <laughs> that's that's the real reason I was told. I will also, I'm also going to throw this out too. I I I don't like the concept of the Moderna, the Madonna worship, because they don't worship, they're not worshiping a woman for being a woman, right? Mm -hmm. Like it is very much, Mary is yeah. a virgin. Mary is quiet. Mm -hmm. Mary is obedient. Mary did what God told her to do. Mary followed orders and Mary gave mm -hmm. birth. And that's Good all that virtues that we had to a man, to yes. the best man and had a son. And that's all the virtues we bestow on the opposite sex. And True. that's it. We don't care that's about it. what she liked, her favorite music issues she had politically <laughs> when she menstruated like none of that matters it's like you're obedient you're quiet you gave birth and yes. you're a virgin and you're the, the best version of a woman possible and in my head that's like such a such a pigeonholing of a character of what a woman can be and so when i see that it's like i don't see that as a, a healthy i don't see worship as healthy anyway but i also don't see that as a good target i just see that as another misogynistic example of like mm -hmm. hey it wouldn't it be great if all women that gave birth were virgins <laughs> no mm -hmm. it, that's the most perfect woman possible it's like really that's such a small aspect of it but um i was i was trying to make an analogy in my head while while we were thinking about this but i'd be like you know qualifying mary as a, a as like the best woman is like qualifying mickey mouse as the best black character on tv and it's just like <laughs> they're like so many layers and questions apart <laughs> because like how are you even coming? It's like well he's he's got mostly a black face he's got the big black ears and stuff it's like that's not even close to it anyway uh george thank you for that story <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like i said it, it didn't work you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i still can't i still can't do arith arithmetic all i now, have to do is say pra praise jesus for calculators <laughs> yeah so i'm going to go back to another story with satan too like the whole idea of satan was that he was sent to hell because he thought he was more beautiful than god and god got upset about that or essentially right is that the story correct me if i'm wrong Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But essentially, it was a, a, a sense of vanity and God's major plan of like, hey, you know, no one can think they're better than me. And Satan's like, but I'm at least cuter than you, right? <laughs> like, I wear this well, beard better than you wear that beard, right? Is it what he goes think? back to what do we mean by worship? Mm. And, you know, when you look at the Bible, what did they mean by worship? And it was very very much a vain type of concept because yes. uh, the, the other word for worship um, that was synonymous with the word worship in the Bible was glory, glorification. So like first Timothy, uh, first Corinthians, I think it is 1031 or whatever. Hmm. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, give all glory to God, do it right. all for the glory of God. And so God is a jealous God and he yes. doesn't want you giving Explicitly that glory so. or worship to other symbols, hmm. you know, because he's jealous. He wants all that to himself, you know, his vain. And I feel like it's more of like insecurity. Like if you told me, Hey, plot twist, the God that we've been worshiping or God of Christianity is actually the God of insecurity this whole time. I'd be like, it makes, makes sense. A lot of, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. And someone just gave him the keys. And next thing you know, he's just turning all the keys and be like, worship me or I'm flooding this or I'm burning this mm -hmm. village or I'm turning this lady into salt. Or I'm just like, wait, did you say turn a lady into salt? I'm turning a lady into salt. <laughs> I like salt. I'm like, okay, okay. He got the salt key, guys. <laughs> he has all the keys. What are you going to do? Just worship them. What value? Okay, let's, let's try to steal man this best that we can then. Uh, what value could a being possibly get from being worshipped? Uh, John, I'll throw this to you first. What possible value is there in being worshipped? 
Ooh, I don't know. It, uh, an inflated ego, maybe? Okay. Yeah. I, I imagine you have to have, if God's powers were ego based, like he had to have a certain impression of himself to be able to do the things that he does. Yeah. I can see the value in that. Like there's some weird twist in there. What do you think? The, the trouble is it, it sort of assumes that he's a bit neurotic and needs <laughs> to have an inflated ego to be constantly mm. massaged. Mm. Especially right. if he punishes those who don't worship him. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Well, sounds like a certain politician I know of. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like several. Yeah. Well, there is By a the Christian way, I... apologetic for it though. Oh, talk to us. Mm -hmm. So the Christian apologetic for why should God be worshipped? Um, and they will say because what is entailed in worshipping God is doing God's will. And what God's will entails is treating others with love, with respect, with loving your wife as you love yourself. Hmm. Um, you know, all of these, you know, supposed virtues and things like that. So... It's for our own good that we worship God. Larry, that's the perfect jump off to you. How would you respond to, it's for your own good to worship God. That's the benefit. I'd, I'd say I don't understand the correlation. Why the, is it good for me? How mm, is it good for me? Or I would see, I can see the correlation, but I don't, I'm not, I, you have not demonstrated the causation for me. Like I can see that you're connecting dots, but one's not causing the other. I can be good to right, my wife. Right. I can be a good person without worshiping God. And so this is just an mm -hmm. extra step that's right. not needed, though you can correlate them. There's no cause showing that doing this makes the other one happen. Uh, there is a causation in the apologetic though. Um, okay. And that's because the reward for doing that is going to heaven. So anyways, <laughs> and, and staying out of hell. John. What do you got? Well, I've remembered the name of the Roman goddess who looked after the sewers. It's oh, this Chloe... thing again. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's Cloacina. She's well worth worshipping. You don't Cloacina. There's a bacteria strain named after her. Is that uh, really her name? Yeah, it was, yeah. Very often we use Roman and Greek words to name things in biology, don't we? Wow. Well, there's a, there is a, that's like shining a light on like, two years of my <laughs> biochemistry classes at work. Oh, really? so like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like realizing mo Monday's named after the moon and Sunday's named after the sun. You're like, the whole time? Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, I but it sounds, it, it sounds to me like a brand of cookies. <laughs> yes. Cohen Cena. <laughs> Cohen Cena, yeah. Cohen I, wanted Cena, to, yeah. I wanted to ask Scott, what's the difference between apologetics and spin? Ooh. Yeah. There, there's no difference. I always like to put it this way, and this is pretty sarcastic, but I think apologetics exists to make believers not feel stupid. Oh, man, that's the best quote for today. Scott, you got the best <laughs> quote for today. You got to put that in the song. If you play an entire electronic set and end on that phrase, apologetics exists so Christians don't think they're stupid. <laughs> like that, so mean. That'd be like, not just, man, not so just mean. Christians, My though. face is frying. Yeah. It's so good. Religious. Uh, yeah, yeah religious people in general. I feel like apologetics also exists for people to have an excuse not to think about what they believe because we know the result of what happens when you do that. People become more skeptical. And it tends to be the case that the more skeptical you are, the further away you run from religion. And people don't like that. So what's the best thing that they can do is they can say, oh, these answers have already been solved. They're in a book or they're in a YouTube video. You don't have to see the YouTube video. They exist. So just keep doing what you're doing. And if you ever do want to see them, you can, and you can see them and you can read them. And they feel good. They feel like they make sense, but they're not engaging you to think about the process of how they came up with that conclusion. They're just an explanation, not an answer. Well, they're just an answer, not an explanation. George, take yourself off mute. Come back. Yes. Um, you know, I've been thinking about this. Uh, to, to me, living here in the Bible Belt is a very confusing experience. Uh, you know, um, so I, I think... I think that what is at the root of this is an emotional thing. People are comforted by the familiar. Mm -hmm. And if they're raised with this belief system, they want to keep on returning to it. It's a source of comfort. 
George, I have an even that, more extreme version of that. I wouldn't even say people are comforted by the familiar. I'd say they're afraid of change. I would say they're absolute, absolutely, absolutely. It's the opposite. The change is frightening. Mm. You know, it's also guaranteed. And, and it's, yeah. What's that? It's also guaranteed. The one thing that we will constantly have is change. Yes. Yeah. That's mm. easy too. So the, life is scary, basically. <laughs> but the tendency to resist change is because it's comforting to know how everything works. And once things change, we don't know. We're in a situation of doubt once more. And this is why, in my mind, the religious tend to be in alignment with conservatism. Mm. They don't politically. They don't want change. Yeah. Can you say more about that? I'm curious. Yeah. Well, in in uh, in the states, it's the Republican Party, isn't it? That is yes. the most evangelical. Yep. But it, it wasn't it wasn't always that way, right? Like, no, wasn't that only not. until like 1960s and anti-drug yes. Nixon yes. era that it yes. suddenly became? We're going to need yes. the South on our side, so let's become really religious. Yes. Yes. It's not the same Republican Party it was way back at all. No, no. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Now it's not even the same poverty it was eight years ago, right? Like it's, no. No. it's, it's devastating to see what's going on. But I mean, conservatism in my head is sort of a harken back to traditionalism, sort of like old people have figured out the problems for us. We just have to basically do what they do. You don't have to think about it. Just yes, do what yes. they're doing. Just stay on this course and it's okay. Yes. And, well, that's, that's another tendency, isn't it? The appeal yep. to authority. Mm, yes. We, we like authority. We like a hierarchy. We like a big God at the top. To, I don't. Who, who's who's this we that you're talking about? <laughs> humanity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> who is the most worship worthy? The big one at the top. Dang general humanity for, for possibly even making that true. It's probably the case. Yeah. But yeah, I hear what you're saying though. I still comes back to the main question of like, why does worship have to be an option? I would love, and I've talked about this before. Um, there's versions of God on a show called uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul or Pax or something like that. There was a show called Chicken Soup for the Soul where it was not so much, it was very much an interventionist God, but it wasn't like in your face, you have to do what I want. It's more of like, oh, um, you got a flat tire. Well, because, you know, you were nice to people, those people have found you on the road and can came to help you fix your tire up again. And it was just through your own machinations of putting good in the world that that good came and helped you out so that you can continue on your way. And like, that would be an episode of chicken soup for the soul. There wouldn't even be like a God character. It would just be like wholesome, good things that can come about through being, you know, uh, an uplifting, inspiring person in the world. And I was like, if, if, if you told me that in order to make this work, there was a God pulling levers and keeping track of like, like good values and being like, okay, put in this good. We're now cashing this good check. And now good things are going to happen. I'd be like, okay, at least that God is interventionist is working in people's lives in a benevolent way. And isn't asking to be worshiped like that in my book would be like, ah, oh, okay, this is the benevolent God that I've been always hearing about, but that is not the character that's in the Bible. Oh. And it still doesn't explain the value of worship, even as a concept, because it seems like he would be just as capable of using his supernatural powers to help whether we worship or don't worship. Um, and I'm brought back and I'll, I'll lose this as my final point. Uh, there was a, there's a philosopher who says basically, I, and I, I, I don't even want to misquote him because I don't know who it was, but um, essentially there's, if I, if I don't worship period, and I'm punished for it by a God that wanted to be worshiped. That wasn't the God that I wanted to worship in the first place. Right. And if I end up not worshiping anybody and the God's like, yeah, you're, you're free to go to the, the good place. They'll be like, Oh, cool. Uh, awesome. Cause that's, that is the kind of God that I want to, that I would want to be with is one that wouldn't demand worship from me in the, in the first place. seems like it's such a extreme thing to ask for. Scott, what is the thing that you got closest to worshiping? Uh, you mean as a, as um, in even life a, in general? Yeah, even if it's a concept, what was what was the uh, thing that you've gotten close to worshiping most? 
Uh, well, I used to be Jehovah Witness, so I definitely used to worship that religion. But <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's outside true. of that. No, um, I guess now nowadays, what's the thing that you nowadays, even um, conceptually, even if it's momentary, maybe too, skepticism. Ah. Oh. Maybe I worship that. I think it can be. It can. It can almost be. And I notice a tendency in myself to where I like. I've, I've become so comfortable in embracing of not knowing things and being yeah. skeptical about things mm. that I've, I've almost, I almost want to not know things and want to not, and be skeptical about things. Like just, there's a side of, and I have to keep that in check. Like I have sure. to yeah. always watch it because I might be acting on cognitive bias, just like mm. anybody else. Mm. So, but yeah, I've seen myself go down that road nice and i wouldn't even say you worship it i just say like that's the thing that you you can get a lot of i would say positive in returns from when you invest mm -hmm. time into it so that's mm -hmm. a that's a good tra set trade-off john same question to you what's the thing that you found that you not worship but get as close to possible and it can be a thing a person a concept even if it's temporary like a good song that you heard for like three minutes and you're like now i'm going to go off to the next thing what was like something where you were like that was the, that was that was it. Eric Clapton. <laughs> I'd love oh, to know. <laughs> Eric Clapton. I'm surprised you said him. Isn't he American? No, no, he's British. Yes. Oh, okay. He I sings like him. he's American, and that's a that's a conversation for another well, time. Well, we all do, don't we? That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd love, to, I'd love to be able to play the the guitar like him. Oh he yeah, yeah. Be, he he used to be known as God of the guitar many yeah. years ago. Yeah, I, I aspire to his skill as well. Yes. Yeah, but it's worship is a, an anathema to me because I'm a retired science teacher, sure. and we don't have any respect in science. We don't have any respect for people true. at all. We have respect for ideas. Yeah, and we're yeah. we're willing to challenge any person, no matter how high up the hierarchy. Absolutely. If we think their ideas are faulty. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know science works, because it's yes. constantly just yes, proving, indeed. I don't believe it. So, no, so no. Worship, worship is not part of my earth. Mm. So it does sound like you have an appreciation for the scientific method, if anything. Like, one of, yes. uh, along with Eric Clapton, yes. scientific method is also like, yes. I will go to bat for this. I'll fight for this. Yes. I'm in the yes. same boat. I would, if there was a conference where it's like, we're going to decide whether or not I'll tell you quickly, when I went to Kentucky, I went to the textbook center to see what the University of Textbooks had said about biology, just mm -hmm. as a lark, and none of them were good in terms of describing evolution. They were either uh, uh, a three paragraph thing in a big old yeah. textbook, or literally had yeah. words like capital C creator made blocks, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this is startling to see this in a science textbook. That's well, that's being... Kentucky, isn't it? Oh, but it, Kentucky's out of the South, I think. I feel like it's just, help me out. I don't know. Uh, it it, it so depresses other, me either way, but yeah. The other, thing, the other thing I wish, it would be freedom of speech. I think anybody should be able to express themselves without being censored. We can talk about that. I feel like censorship, I feel like words do have the capability of hurting in ways that we may not even anticipate, especially with libel or Twitter. Like it's very easy to, to witch hunt or kill people in, in like a public sense. And if we don't have means of censoring that or observing that or controlling that to some extent, we may have something like a president who will tell a bunch of people to go into the Capitol building and kill people or the vice president. And like that a news needs to source like Fox news. Yeah. 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 Like if any, if there's ever a demonstration of why censorship is useful, it's that like that. And that should be like, not something that's up to one CEO. It should be like a systematic. We don't accept that block that as we have decided to term that George Brown, uh, sort of like a final thought section. Um, what's the thing that you love the most? Well, I think if there was a master race in the universe that came back to Earth and said, gee, we've overlooked these people for so long, uh, should we let them live or should we just bomb the hell out of this place mm. as, a, as, a, as a failure? And um, what do they have that's worthy of saving? Um, they, they, they make wars, they kill each other all the time, you know? And, and so the, the one thing that we have that is worthy 
is art. Mm. Our arts. And uh, to me, of course, the the art that I know the most is music. So um, who do I worship in music? Bach, Pachelbel, uh, Palestrina, Charlie Parker, on some days, Joni Mitchell and James Taylor. Nice, nice. So um, e expression through, through art, I think that saves us. It saves me. Saves you expression through art. Powerful statement, George Brown. Larry, thing you love the most, don't say trolling on the internet. Truth, truth, you know. Um, uh, I did worship golf for about 20 years. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. I was saying if you, if you get close to worshiping truth, you're one third of the way of worshiping Superman because he's truth, justice, and the American way. There you that's, go. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, feel... I don't know about the American way anymore. It's kind of come into question with all that's going on here, especially, uh, uh, with the right being so gone, far gone. So I will say this too, just as a, maybe as a, uh, my last inspiring pick me up, but the problems that have been going on are not new in America. And they are finally getting to the recondence or the, the radio stations that everybody's listening to. And because everyone's groaning at the same time, and it's not just, you know, a group of minorities that are groaning anymore, that is a good thing. When everyone's like, oh my gosh, look at this problem. That's so much better than that one person in the room who has the problem being like, this is a big problem, guys. And everyone not listening to that person anymore. So it seems like now more people are aware of things that yeah. we need. What to do you mean about. groaning, pale face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, I think we're getting close to the end of the show. Uh, Larry, uh, Scott, where can we find your stuff at? Where's your band camp? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dubshine.bandcamp.com. Sweet. John Rickard, John Richards, something alliance. There's some sort of alliance out there with a bunch of atheists. It's like an atheist alliance of some sort. What's going on out there? Well, I'm no longer part of that, so you're asking the wrong person. I resigned Ooh, from, I, I resigned I from that. that post back in January now. Okay. But, uh, so I've now got Free Thought Productions, which is my YouTube channel, and you've been on it, yeah. Ty, and Eric's been on it. And I've also got Dredd coming on on Saturday. He's going to spend an hour with me chatting about things. Nice. And anybody else who'd like to come on would be welcome. Sweet. And I have no problem double dipping on that show. Just send me an invite. Great. We have sure. fun. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I've never had anybody refuse to come back. Great. Uh, George, what's something you'd recommend we check out before next week? Maybe what's the best Bach song? Huh? You say asking me? Yeah. Best Bach song. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, he didn't write. He wrote aria. An aria is a song, and okay. um, boy, I, you caught me on Put on guard. You on the spot. You got ten seconds. Best box. But I forgot right? to I, I forgot to mention uh, um, um, Mahler. Gustav Mahler's song cycles very very powerful, very cathartic. Cool. So. Okay, okay. Enough out of me. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you can find me on Let's Chat YouTube. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. Uh, my own content is found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Uh, my YouTube channel can be found by just searching for Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. My book, uh, Atheism, What's It All About? is available on Amazon. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour for another week. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>